Listen, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be invited here with my good brother, Mr. Selvin. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> awesome, brother. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Oh, my God. The ancestors must be smiling tonight. Oh, yeah, they certainly are. <laughs> All right. Yes, my brother. And welcome. Thank you for the invite once more. Um, to all of the listeners out there in Guyana and in the diaspora and right here in good old America, we want to say thank you for checking in on the CSW. CWS. CWS. <laughs> all right. <laughs> CWS show with my good brother, Mr. Selvin. And um, I am here today to share with you many of the things that our ancestors has left with us. And um, I will allow Mr. Selman to go ahead and do his thing. <laughs> Man is the Gria, right? Correct. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Um, well, actually, um, the T is silent. Gria. 
So it's grill. Grill. Menace the grill. Okay. Yeah. Menace the grill. All right, yeah. cool. Um, my French teacher must be cringing right now. Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I was born in British Guiana to Irma and Art Sebastian Brooms, one of Guyana's uh, renowned jazz musician and drummer, mm -hmm. taught music in the Guyana Defense Force Band for more than 20 something years. And um, throughout my life, I have spent time uh, promoting and teaching our culture. And so, for the past, I don't even want to say how many years, but I've been doing my duty in making certain that our tradition, heritage, and culture continues. As a griot, I am responsible for maintaining not only the tradition, but also the history. Being able to speak about some of the history, about the food, about the clothing, about the music. And so, I just love what I do. And um, it has gotten me in a lot of trouble many times. But I will not stop. That's part of my destiny. I, I have to uh, ask you this question. And, and thank you for that. Oh my gosh. Very rhythmic, captivating uh, introduction. Thank you. Um, but, but before you ask the question, since you spoke about the, the, the captivate, I want to I wanna say to those who are listening, sorry you could not see the drum. But I grew up in Border Market, and my first drum was a box. Could you let me ask you the question? Right? <laughs> let, me, let me ask you the question. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I was about to ask you, what was your first introduction to drums? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, but, you know, my first drum was a box. I could not afford to have a drum. Mm -hmm. And so, in the market with my grandmother, running around with a woman who was a matriarch in Border mm -hmm. and in the market, a woman uh, that did so many things for so many people, Sisley. I was known in the market as Sisley grandson. Mm -hmm. And so, I would sit on the box because most of the things back in those days came in boxes. You know, you had drinks box, you had sawfish box, you had all kinds. I would sit on the box and play. Mm -hmm. And so when I came to um, America, North America here, I went into uh, Sam Ash one day. Mm -hmm. I think it was Sam Ash, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't Sam Ash, it was guitar. It was, yeah, it was Guitar Center. Mm -hmm. And I saw this, this box. So I stepped to the guy in the drum section. I said, man, um, I like that box. It reminds me of my first drum. He said, yes, this is called a box drum. And in Cuba, when the drums were banned in Cuba, before the revolution, mm -hmm. the Cubans, in order to maintain their rhythms, those who worked on the water side would sit on the boxes and play. Mm -hmm. That's how they were able to maintain and keep their rhythms. Oh. And today, um, these box drums um, is one of the biggest selling things right now. As but as you drums. play drums professionally. Do you remember yes. when, when you made that transition? When you first started playing professionally? My, I started, first started playing professionally in the church. Mm. See, and um, the Comfort Church, which later became the spiritual church, which is now today known, some of them call themselves the Fetus, mm -hmm. they are the keepers of the African tradition in Guyana. And so it is the, the church 
that I was first paid to play in. When I came to this country, um, there weren't any other drummers that I know of who were playing in the church. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first drummers that was playing in the church. Let's talk about the faith, the faithless church. You remember, uh, I mean, is this a church you grew up in? Yes, as a matter of fact, my, um, my birth was prophesied in the church. Mm -hmm. um, my mother, I was only 16 when she disobeyed my grandmother. And um, the first time she decided to go and experiment, here I come. Hmm. And um, she went to a program where she saw my father playing drums and fell in love with my father, who was, I think, about 19 at the time. And um, next thing you know, instead of her uh, obeying grandma, she decided to go and experiment. And in that experimentation, here I come. The first time she decided to do that, here I come. And while my mother was in church, the leader of the church was a lady they called Mudsy. Mudsy was having a banquet for somebody. I can't remember the, the name of the lady she was having a banquet for. Mm -hmm. And while they was having the banquet and going around the table, the woman and the music was playing, the woman went into her divine state mm -hmm. of consciousness mm -hmm. where she went back into the spirit world. And in that spirit world, she shouted to my grandmother, Sisley, that red picnic of yours is filled with man child and that man child is here to do X, Y, and Z. And that is how my grandmother found out that my mother was pregnant. You talk about the, the traditions, Guyana culture and traditions. Yes. You yourself is very much, in, very much involved with this. Tell us a little bit about why you're still involved and what is it you want Guyanese to know about the importance or to know about preserving our culture and traditions. Well, the first question is very simple. Before we came to Earth, we were living in what is known as our spiritual realm, in our divine space. Some people refer to it as heaven. One of the songs that I sang earlier in the opening it's a song that some of our ancestors, the Oku people, who are part of the Yoruba um, people, mm -hmm. used to greet each other with. And it's Olorun Ire, which means heavenly blessings. Mm -hmm. and so we still travel between this space on earth and our heavenly home. And how we do that is through our dreams. And so many times when people get into a dream state and they see things and they tell people and people become um, <laughs> very discombobulated about the situation because they have been taught that this is it. No, this is not it. You are a spiritual being having a physical experience upon planet Earth. The divine energy that comes from Orun, heaven, enters through your father. And that is why he shivers each time he ejaculates. And it is in your mother's womb that you put on your physical garment. It takes nine months for that physical garment to be placed. And so everything that your mother is experiencing, physically, mentally, and otherwise, affects that unborn child. And so it is very important 
for a woman to be in a safe space and to be comforted during the time of pregnancy. And see, a lot of people don't understand the power of the drums. And like I said, when I first spoke to you, Guyana is the land of many waters and the power of the drums. Mm -hmm. My responsibility on planet Earth is to maintain our tradition, heritage, and color, culture. Everybody comes to planet Earth with a responsibility, with gifts, and they have a destiny. Some of us never get the opportunity to fulfill our destiny or our gifts because our parents pushes us in a different direction. And so many times, a lot of people, they have to wait until later in life after doing the things that their parents want them to do before they say, you know what? Forget about all this. Forget about all the money. Forget about all the, the, the cars and all this and whatever. You know, from a child, I wanted to draw. From a child, I wanted to dance. From a child, I wanted to play music. From a child, I wanted to be in a position where I can help to nurture children. And so many times you find lots of these people in their later stages of life begin to move in that direction, their true calling. Mm -hmm. And so yes, um, I am living what I'm supposed to be doing. It took me a while to get here. 